How you doing, good people? This is the 8-Bit Animal. And another day, another movie tie-in. And actually, this is like the second game in a couple of days where we're going to talk about something based on something Robin Williams was in. I love me some Robin Williams. Robin Williams was a superb actor and most of what he did was typically pretty good. This movie, for whatever reason, just ain't, it, it wasn't it. Just wasn't it. Um, and that's wild because a lot of star power in this movie. The game, at the same time and by the same token, was a mixed bag depending on what love, what um, version you got. See, you got Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo version is fantastic. The Sega CD version is basically the Super Nintendo version, but with a lot better audio. Um, the, there was an arcade version of this game. There's Commodore 64, all these other things. There was a Game Boy version that was longer than the NES version. And then there was the NES version. And the NES version was painfully disappointing. Um, this was released in 1992. And yeah, this one was a... This one just... It hurt. It cut me. And I bled. Today we're going to take a quick look at Hook. Now, I don't remember much about the story for this game or this movie or any part of it. I don't. I played different versions of this. The Super Nintendo one is probably my favorite because of the similarities to one of my favorite Super NES games, and that's Sky Blazer. Oh yeah, this was published by Sony Image, though. Because... Sony Image Soft was kind of hit or miss when it came to the stuff that they published. But when they were on, they were on. Um, this version of Hook wasn't on. The control is shoddy. Um, the music's good. It's bright and colorful. That works. There are instances where Peter flies and you control a behind the behind the Peter view flying stage right there's a lot that should be liked in this game the problem is that the bulk of the game the side scrolling platforming portion ain't good at all it's terrible actually so you're left with a game that's only partially likable. The rest of it, absolutely dreadful. That's what you get with this game. Um, I, I don't really know what else to say. Even the cutscenes between levels where they kind of tell you what you're supposed to be doing, which is a nice touch. It features a sprite of a flying Tinkerbell. A nice touch until you realize that sprite is huge and is obstructing huge chunks of the text. So it's hard to really read what you're supposed to be doing in a level because Tinkerbell's in the way. Good job, Tink. But yeah, um, easily the best part of this game is like the fact that the graphics are bright and colorful and the fact that there is a section where Peter flies though it doesn't control the greatest and the soundtrack is pretty solid not great but solid you want great Super Nintendo versions right there now if you decide you want a copy of Hook Thankfully, despite this game coming out as late as it did, 
You can get a copy for about $20, maybe less. You definitely shouldn't spend more. Honestly, you should just go get the Super Nintendo version. Or the Sega CD version. Or the Mega Drive version. Stay away from the NES and Game Boy versions of this game. If there's some bot, some miraculous way you can get the arcade version of this game, do that. Just beat them up. You'll like it. Just stay away from this NES version. It hurts. It cut me deep. It felt bad. And I think it stinks a little bit. Like literally smelly. It smells like old baloney. <laughs> but this has been the 8 bit animal. I'll catch you, beautiful people, tomorrow. Tomorrow. So this is basically Pac Man meets Tower Defense meets. Atari's combat? Okay.